welcome, welcome, welcome to a very new episode of Unscripted Faith. I'm Jay Anthony Gilbert alongside with Angela Madden. It's so great to be with you. Brand new today. Yes, brand Come on. new inaugural moment here. We are so excited for Unscripted Faith and the stories that are gonna come to encourage you. Listen, we know scripture tells us that we are made overcomers by the blood of the lamb and the word of our testimony. Today is gonna be a new space and a new season to be made overcomers. I am so excited about that. And listen, ladies and gentlemen, what happens when we take responsibility for our behavior and choices and seek God? Can we find forgiveness, love, and hope? Is there a limit to how many times we can start over? We'll be joined by leadership life coach and professor, Dr. Chris Rapazzini, and he's going to share how we can move forward after messing up. Ooh, I'm excited. I think we can, Jay. I think we, I think can. we move forward. But first, before we get with Dr. Chris, Jay and I are going to head over to the main set. And as we walk over, we're going to be joined by a special guest who has an incredible story who has even faced death, stared death wow. in the face. We are so excited to have you yeah, with us today, too. Drew. Me and too. Drew is a phenomenal uh, barbershop owner, but he does truly life-changing services for his customers as they sit in the chair. And we're excited to unpack your story of yes. impact. Come on. Yes, Let's yes, go, yes, Drew. Yes, yes. Excited no, to have you. Thank you all for having me. This is a real blessing. It's, it's humbling yes. because, you know, uh, 20, uh, 15 years ago it was in a whole different situation and <laughs> to be sitting here now being asked to tell my story, yes. it's, a, it's a blessing, it's humbling. So you were raised up here in the Penn Hills area. Yes, I was and you... I, Sorry, sorry. No, okay. I started in McKeesport. We moved to Penn Hills, grew up there, and it was a culture shock, <laughs> to say the least, you know, and it just brought its own pressures by moving from one area to move into this suburban area yes. where the pressure to be something different wore off on me. Yes. You know, me and my brother and sister. You know. So Drew, you grew up, you gave your life to the Lord at 15, but then you kind of found yourself double dipping a little bit yeah. with this pressure to really be accepted among peers and found yourself kind of wrapped up in a lifestyle of gangs and drugs and, and in and out of jail. But there was a moment that happened that kind of opened your eyes of God's miraculous power in your life, even though you weren't pursuing him. Can you share that story with us? Yes, yeah, yeah. so I, I chased what I thought love and friendship mm -hmm. was. And you know, at the cost of you know, losing a lot of trust with my parents and just fighting against their rules and just wanting to appear thug, gangster, wanting that more than anything. And I did, you know, a lot of real filthy things in order to build these relationships with people that I thought it was attractive, you know, it was appealing. And the reward for building those friendships resulted in them trying to kill me. And that was a big wake up moment for me because that's what I pursued, you know, with all my heart against what God tried to show me what love really was. And he was gracious enough to spare my life through that two times, actually. It took two really good friends' attempts on my life for me to wake up. It wasn't the jails. It wasn't the juvenile facilities. It wasn't upstate. It was my world of what I thought love was and friendship was collapsing on me for God to give me contrast to show me what real love is. So, so. I'm guessing then you must learn things the hard way because, see, if a bee flies by my head, I don't learn my lesson. You said two shootings had to two take times. place for you. Now, you, you, you have a story about uh, being shot and a miracle that transpired. Uh, what happened uh, in that moment? Yeah, so I was lured into the woods by two really close friends that I refer to as brothers because of word that they thought that I was gonna do something to them and the way that I was behaving, they were convinced that that was true. So a gun that I was very familiar with was borrowed and as shots were fired, I ran through the woods. By your friends? By my friends. Your brothers, you said? My brothers. Okay, all my right, brothers. just wanna get that straight. Really confused as if it was happening. Found my way to a random car who was 
kind enough or probably scared at the time of me knocking on their window frantically to drive me to the hospital. At the hospital, I pull out my jacket to make sure that the drugs that were in there weren't found by the police. And in doing so, I see all six of the sprouts of the bullets exiting the back, the vital organs of my jacket. And I had to take, you know, a few glances at that wow. and wrap my mind around, yeah. you know, how that was possible because I have no gunshot wounds through my body. There's one in my arm, but still to this day, I still can't even find that gunshot, <laughs> that wow. exit hole in the, in Did the jacket. Did you have anybody praying for you? Do you have family or oh, somebody yes, praying? Yes, yes. Somebody had to been praying oh, for yeah. you. I, I've had a father and mother, you know, praying and fasting over me for years. And even that's even a, in a testimony of itself, you know, for my parents to be faithful in what they believe the word said about their children to not see the fruit of that for years. Wow. For them to now have children that fully serve the Lord and they see fruits of their time on their knees and time in the word, you know. Yeah. Well, even as you're saying that, that's what I instantly went to was the fact that you had to have a yeah. praying mama or grandma yeah. or a yeah. father yeah. who covered you right. and those bullets had no effect. I mean, that to me is mind blowing. Yeah. Yeah. So that happens and then you have another moment of that. What, what was the, okay, I've been shot at, that didn't take me back to the Lord. You know, I realize these brothers aren't really faithful. You yeah. know, what was the moment that made you say, okay, Jesus, you're the only way? You know, it, it was really the, it was the, the second attempt that brought me to the backyard of my parents' house that made me not want what I was getting from what I was pursuing anymore. And I just, it was just a, a, a prayer to say, God, I, I want this to end. And there, there was actually another moment where, you know, my, my father not understanding the nature of the situation, seeing bullet holes in my sister's car, that he was putting me out of the house. And I felt very betrayed by this. And I was now losing my family at the same time as I'm losing my friends. I'm losing everything. So it was at those moments that I'm like, what I'm investing in, <laughs> I'm not reaping a good harvest. And if you saying living by your word is the result to a changed life, please just show me. That's, and that's all I could say. I, I just, you just need you to show me. And he spoiled me. He wow. spoiled me. I mean, he just, he just fed me. Just result after result that I could trust him. I could trust him with beef that I caused in the world to keep me safe, he trusted, he, he showed me that I could trust him with providing me a job, that's all I wanted. Just wanted to live a, a normal life. <laughs> yeah. And he gave that to me. Well, that's outstanding, man. Let me ask you this question. Um, as we get ready to wrap this up here, we're gonna let you go, but I wanna know, what are you doing now? Because you said you wanted to have a job, mm -hmm. you wanna have all this thing, God totally redeems, he brought you out of that life. You're doing some big things. Share with us what's been happening in your world. Wow, so God has just really blessed <clears throat> my wife and I with two business, three businesses, and they've been thriving for 10 years. We're barbers, salon owners, and a- What's the name? Style and Grace. Style, style and Grace, Grace Barbershop. You, you gotta Grace. ask that. Well, you, you know what? That? You, you wanna say I'll take it from Biggie, but well, well, God, no, listen, no, no. <laughs> Come on. Listen, it, it, it was incorporated in God's grace with the yeah. style that we give. That's awesome. You know, is we do that, but grace is the ministry. Yeah. You know, we got Glam and Grace, that's my wife's side, and then we got Style and Grace Hair Inc. where we restore hair loss to people. Where are you so, guys located at? We're located in Monroeville, Monroeville Boulevard, yeah, yeah. Very cool. So, I very love cool. that. Amazing turnaround. And you're not just like helping people with haircuts, but like you said, you're actually restoring hair loss, yes. which is changing lives. And I love how God has That's deeply so impacted cool. your life. And now you're going on to impact others. Thank yes. you so yes. much, Drew, Absolutely. for being no, here thank you. and for sharing your story with us. What a yeah. beautiful yes. testimony. No, thank you all. Very cool. Thank Amen. You. Amen. Yeah. Well, ladies and gentlemen, coming up next, we have Dr. Chris Rapanzini. Stay tuned. It's going to get better. With our thanks for your generous gift this month, request your 16-month Jewish Christian Victory Calendar when you give in support of Cornerstone Television Network. Inside the calendar, you'll discover stunning photos of sites in the land of Israel that have been vital to the fulfillment of God's promises to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Plus, find encouragement through Scripture, reminding us of God's faithfulness in the midst of struggle. 
the 16-month Jewish Christian Victory Calendar features beautiful pictures of the Holy Land, room to track important dates, American and Jewish holidays, and a victory scripture for every month. Thank you in advance. Your partnership allows us to reach the lost through Christian television, provide our 24-7 prayer line, and support outreach to widows, orphans, and more. To request your calendar, call us at 888-665-4483 or give at ctvn.org slash donate. Hey, Tom, what you doing? Oh, I can't find anything good on YouTube to watch. The commentaries, the blogs, the tier videos, the gaming videos, it's all boring. Oh, have you thought about subscribing to Cornerstone's YouTube channel? Cornerstone has a YouTube channel? Of course it does. <laughs> Hold on, taking a pause to remind you to subscribe to our channel. Hit that like button and ring that bell for notifications. Now back to the video. I'll show you how to subscribe. Just search for Cornerstone Television Network and hit the subscribe button so you can stay up to date getting filled with the Holy Spirit with consistent uploads every day. Keep up with your favorite moments and never miss a beat. Will you help us as we race to 100,000 subscribers? We can't do it without your help. The content is never ending with countless hours of entertainment. So subscribe to the Cornerstone YouTube channel today. Hope happens here. Welcome back to Unscripted Faith. Listen, we've got a scripture for you. Romans chapter 3, verse 23 says, We all sin and fall short of the glory of God. There's no denying that we've all made mistakes, and sometimes those mistakes can weigh heavily on us. Professor and Pastor Dr. Chris Rapazzini is our next guest, and he joins us now to share how we can move forward and find freedom after messing up. Dr. Chris, welcome to Unscripted Faith. Hey, thanks, Jay. Thanks, Angela, for having me. We are so glad to have you, Dr. Chris. And just tell us a little bit. I know at a very young age, you and your brother lost your father to cancer, and that was a very traumatizing moment. And it really caused a splintering of your relationship together and then also within your own self. Tell us a little bit of what that looked like for you and your brother and how those paths kind of crossed again to bring hope. Sure. Well, yeah, whenever you have a death in the family, particularly of a parent, um, it's a crucible moment. And so my brother and I, we were both teenagers at the time. We were just actually just starting in college. And um, I was at a Bible college and he was at a state college. I won't tell you which state college, but he liked to, well, major in college life, if you will. <laughs> and when our father passed away, that's how he remedied his grief, through alcohol, through drugs. Um, like I said, for me, I was at a Bible college, so I had professors, the scripture, prayer. And yeah, our paths went in opposite directions. He eventually moved to Colorado when they changed their marijuana laws and um, found a group that he was able to connect with there. But unfortunately, it was not a... Uh, a really good support group for him. And we lost touch. Um, he was oftentimes difficult to get a hold of. And fast forward about 15 years, and I find out that he is homeless and in jail. And so, yeah, our relationship was just broken. And it was when I found out that he was in jail, I'm sure we both um, wondered, how did it get to this? And how did he mess up so much? How did I mess up in the relationship? What responsibility did I have? And so that's really um, where the book started. Well, you know, Dr. Chris, I'll be honest with you. I haven't always had my halo crooked on my horns. I've uh, messed up a few times in my life. Uh, I hear you talking about your brother. Where have you messed up in life? Because, you know, that's really what it gets down to as well, is where we have dropped the ball. So what's happened in your world? Yeah, I like to think that there is public prodigals, like my brother's story, where everybody kind of knows what's going on. But then there's also private prodigals or functioning prodigals who are probably, you look at them, they're walking with the Lord, but deep down on the inside, you know, they're just messed up as well. There's yeah. pride issues, there's um, desires, there's sin that's going on in their lives. And for me, you know, I realized just in my brother's relationship that um, I wasn't as loving as I should have been towards him. I mean, the, the theme passage that I love is, of course, the story of the prodigal son. But as you all know, there's actually two sons in that story. Yeah. And it was actually the older brother's responsibility, the one who is supposedly walking with God, to go after his younger brother. 
Yet instead, he just stayed home indignant, thinking he was doing the right thing. And that's what I thought as well. I thought, well, my brother got himself into this mess. He'll get himself out of it. But unfortunately, that's not what Scripture teaches. That's not what God wants for us. He wants us to go after the prodigals in our lives. And so I feel like as I've you know thought about that and wrestled with both a public and a private prodigal, that's where I need to really go after the prodigals in my life. What was it for you, Dr. Chris, that kind of pushed you past that sense of like justice and what is right. Like, like you said, you know, he'll figure it out. It's on him. And, and that can, as believers in particular, I feel like that really can leave us in this place of I'm not moving from this rock. I'm right. They're wrong. What pushed you beyond that rightness and that sense of wrongness into truly the character of Christ? Yeah, I, I think there's two things. Um, one was just seeing how heartbroken my mother was about, you know, her son being, you know, in jail and, and her not being able to do anything. I mean, she tried for years and years and years, and a lot of times that's what parents do, but in some sense she was enabling her him and just had to let go, and, you know, he went into a downward spiral. But then I also think for myself is to reflect on, well, what did God actually do for me, and um, how has he forgiven me? I like to say, um, do you know those um, little sticky notes you put on your, your shirt whenever you go to an event that says, hello, my name is? And imagine you have to write that on there, but also your deepest, darkest sin, maybe the ones that nobody knows of. So, you know, Chris, uh, liar, or Jenny, gossiper, Graham, adulterer. And we walk around this world with, thinking that is our identity. But then Christ comes into the room and he comes over and he sees that name tag and he takes it off of your chest and puts it on his own. You think, well, I don't have a name tag anymore. What am I going to be known as? And he says, well, I have a name tag. It says Christ and it says whole, valuable, worthy. And he takes it off of his chest and puts it on ours. And that's what it means to be in Christ. And so I realized, wow, fully, that's what Christ has done for me. He's taken away my past, my sin, my old identity, given me a new one. And if that's what he's done for me, that's what he can do for my brother. That's what he can do for anybody who's fallen short, just like you read, Jay, and messed up and wants a chance to move forward. So tell us about your relationship with your brother now. What was the turnaround concerning that? And where are you guys at now in your world? Yeah, well, I like to say that, you know, it's, it's not a happy, happy ending yet. He's not a believer yet. So I'm still walking that journey with him. But thankfully, through rehab, out of rehab, back into rehab, out of rehab. Um, he's doing a lot better. He's sober now. He's um, wow. actually a peer-to-peer -peer coach for others who are struggling with alcohol and drugs. And it started uh, with you know just the journey of, of our relationship of just having conversations. I had to keep them usually to five to 10 minutes at a time, but then they would grow to 15 minutes, 30 minutes. We'd correspond more and more. Usually it was me reaching out and calling him, checking in on him, making sure he's doing well and talking about him and his life, doing a lot of listening. But now as he's grown in his just maturity, uh, we're able to have more what you would call adult conversations. And so things are going a lot better. And I try to slip in the gospel as much as I possible, but also just to live the gospel as much as possible for him. Do you feel like in your, your journey and your brother's journey, do you feel like it was really that running to Jesus for you and for him just kind of sitting in the pain and, and, and judging God for it? Or what was it that you feel like in the passing of a father, a parent is difficult, but what was it that ultimately drove him and kept him in that cycle of addiction? I think it was his inability to mourn and grieve the loss of a father. He didn't know what was going on. And I think because he was not surrounded by a good support group, um, that he wasn't able to filter or understand those emotions that he was feeling. He was trying to remedy them with drugs and alcohol. And it's, it is hard when you lose a loved one, and we all lose loved ones, is how do we... Are we just going through that um, by ourselves or are, do we have a group of people that we can talk to about that? And I, I think that was the major thing that was going on in his life at the time. Well, Dr. Chris, before we let you go, uh, can you also tell us uh, how people can find out more about the ministry that you offer? Sure, yeah, they can go to faithfulstepsforward.com, faithfulstepsforward. I like to work with leaders, um, churches, 
um, in, in any and all capacity. The book is called Moving Forward After Messing Up. You could just Google it or just Google my last name. It's the only <laughs> Rappazzini on there other than my brother. <laughs> well, thank you so much, Dr. Chris. We so appreciate your time. We're praying for you as you continue to move forward. We're going to keep your brother in our prayers that God continually to just work in his life as well. But thank you so much for your time and what you're offering to the body of Christ. Thank you for having me. Stay with us. When we come back, Jay and I will share our personal experiences of struggling after messing up. We'll be right back. We left the light on for you. Cornerstone Network is your home for Christian television. A place of rest. A beacon of truth. Your source of encouragement and entertainment. Welcome home. Make Cornerstone Network your home for the best in local Christian TV, bringing you programs like... We need people that have become disciples and now they're able to disciple someone else and not just go to week after week after week, get ministered to. After a certain period of time, there needs to be a turnaround. We left the light on for you. Cornerstone Network is your home for Christian television. Welcome home. Listen, Unscripted Faith has been phenomenal. In this very first program, we have dived into two powerful stories of impact. But now I want to bring it to you, Come Pastor Jay. I've got to ask you, was there a time in your life when you felt like you messed up so bad there was no turning back? Oh, man. Well, listen, I had my time before Christ. But then I also had my time, you know, once I was in Christ. So I won't mention that because, you know, when we mess it before Christ, we always say that's under the blood, you know, so that's not really that big of a deal. You know what I mean? It's like, oh, yeah, I did that before I came to Jesus. But talk about stuff that I did. I was in ministry and I had a major crash in 2004. Uh, there wasn't nothing unethical, immoral, just bad leadership. And I had lost the confidence of my family. Long story short in this, I got into my pulpit. I got so spiritually minded mm -hmm. that I was literally no earthly good. And I got to a point where I wasn't, I got in my pulpit through a series of different events for like 45 minutes. I didn't say anything. I just stared out into the crowd. People started leaving my church. A lot of people don't know this story. Started leaving my church, started, just walked out. Um, people were in tears. Um, I ended up going to the psychiatric unit because I, I wasn't crazy or anything. I just got so like, I was like, I'm not going to speak unless God speaks to me. And I had completely lost my mind. My covering wow. came in, went through a real dark time and um, dropped the ball, lost the uh, confidence of my family, uh, lost everything. And uh, my brothers who are with me in ministry to this day were there and witnessed it took me to the psychiatric unit, which this is a funny thing about it, Angela. When I said all of that, uh, when I was there, they said, there ain't nothing wrong with this guy. He's just crazy about God. <laughs> so I, I, was, I was just like Peter cutting off people's ears. You know, I just like, yes. well, I don't want to speak anything to God. And so people thought I literally lost my mind. But thanks be unto God, he completely redeemed it. Uh, the people that I lost, probably 90% of them came back. It was outstanding, but that was an area of my life that I really messed up and I saw God redeem it. I ended up leading 30 pastors uh, in a unity gathering in our, in our city. There was a whole lot of stuff that happened. I, if I had time, I could go through it all. But not only did I mess up in ministry, God redeemed it. And those principles that I learned during that time are the very ones that I apply today that helped me to lead to this day. Wow. Now, what do you think it was? Was there a moment that you felt like you were sharing, that you, you spoke and it wasn't what God wanted and somebody judged you for it? Or what, what do you think ultimately led you to that moment of, I can't speak anything unless God... You know, you, you, what can happen is when you are raised, I went to a school, and I won't mention the name, but I went to a school where it was so legalistic mm -hmm. and so like you had to flow by the spirit that I forgot how to think. I got wow. to a point where I lost, I was down to 160 pounds because I wouldn't eat. 
I had completely like lost my mind, but I just wanted to do God's will. It wasn't anything that I was trying to be evil. I just, but I wasn't taught the practical ways to walk with God. I just was out there and I was like, I wouldn't move. And I mean, I'm flowing in all these things, had no structure or order. Just the Lord is leading me, you know? Yeah. And I got out into Goofyville and I lost the confidence of a lot of people, but uh, it didn't start from anything bad. It was just um, legalism. And so God brought pastors into my life that taught me how to live practically yes. and still be led by the spirit. And when you mix the two of those, uh, that can really make a powerful, uh, powerful combo together. It's like the word and the spirit. Exactly. Having both, have like both. you have to you have, have both, both that yeah. balance. Do you feel like if those who are in church today, like I know there are people mm -hmm. in those congregations that are very much like that. Like I can't speak, I'm not gonna yeah. do anything unless yeah. God tells me. People who put their entire life on hold, yeah. waiting for God to move the door, to yeah. open, you know, what would you say to that person today? Oh man, well one, get yourself a good pastor. Uh, you need pastors. Number two, you know, there's a place in the scripture where Moses goes to Pharaoh and says, let my people go. Well, one of the things we have to do, let my people think. Come on. And we have to on. learn how to think. That's you know, I'm realizing we're spirit, soul, and body. Yes. So I was just living spirit. I forgot yes. I had a mind, will, and emotions, and a body was going there. And sometimes there are things that we call that are spiritual. Come they're on. not. It's Come not on. God. It's just you. You've got to learn how to think. God's not going to tell you what yes. clothes to wear. He didn't wake up this morning and say, you better wear that yellow jacket there, yes. gold jacket. Yes. You know, you have to learn how to think. So if there's anything yes. I could tell people is learn how to think for yourself. Just yes. because you got spirit filled doesn't mean you throw your brain away. God's not going to make every decision for you. And you know, God is God. He knows how to get your attention when he needs to. Otherwise, just make decisions as God leads you and keep moving forward in Jesus name. Yes. Oh, Pastor Jay, I love that. What a powerful story. Like I yeah. had no idea. Most people don't. I mean like yeah. that, that is powerful. And I think for all of us, honestly, hearing that story and watching to know that anybody can go too far right yeah. or too far left, that Jesus is the only way to stay centered in That's the right. things of God. Amen. And you must have word and spirit. You got to, and you have to think as a believer. You can't be so spirit led that you literally throw your brain away. Come on. Listen, today we hope that you are walking in the one who is the word, being led by his spirit, that Amen. his spirit would arise in you. Any area that you feel is out of balance or you feel stuck, let it be an invitation for Holy Spirit himself to come in, breathe life, and find his word that will lead you into paths of righteousness and goodness today. Cornerstone Television wishes to thank all our faithful viewers whose consistent prayers and financial support have made this program possible.